you're not just a name on a piece of paper. Your commander knows who you are, your superintendent, your supervisor. They know what's going on, what you got going on in life. I'm Sergeant Marcus Walker. I'm the uh, Air Force Reserve recruiter. I'm located out here in Moore, Oklahoma, which is about 10 minutes south of Oklahoma City. I'm originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but I grew up in El Paso, Texas, just by being an Army brat. Uh, originally entered the Air Force in 2010, uh, came in as security forces, but was able to get a secondary tech school to be an academy instructor. Started out in Dover and Delaware, then transferred out to Pope Air Force Base out there at Fort Bragg and then transferred out to Dobbins Air Reserve Base in Atlanta, Georgia. And then now I'm out here at Tinker Air Force Base as my fourth location. If you wanna get in contact with me, uh, I have Facebook, Air Force Reserve, more slash Midwest City. And then for my Instagram, it's Air Force Reserve Oklahoma. And then I have the Twitter page, which is Air Force Reserve Staff Sergeant Marcus Walker. Can you do college while you're in the Air Force Reserves? Yep. One week in a month, you're doing a military thing. You could be a student Monday through Friday. Uh, your military is not going to interfere with being a full-time student. Does the reserves pay for college? So you can go to college while you're in, but how are you going to afford college? What are the, what is the incentive or benefits that the reserve offers there? So you have multiple routes. Um, you have your tuition assistance, where basically the Air Force Reserve is going to give you $4,500 to put strictly towards your tuition. And that's tuition only, not books, not fees or anything. And then as well, as long as you're a high school graduate, you're going to receive the Montgomery GI Bill Select Reserve. It's not going to be the same amount compared to our active duty counterpart, because as soon as you complete your base training or tech school, you'll have access to 40% of that. I normally recommend a lot of people uh, understand it's it's nice going to a four year college, but why are you spending ten and fifteen thousand dollars for a English comp class that you can take at a Gen college? general education classes? <laughs> you're spending all this extra money for no reason. If you go to a community college, knock out your basics, and transfer to a four year, your Montgomery GI Bill Select Reserve will actually help cover that tuition. Um, and then as well, depending on the career field you enlist to there's a thing called a kicker. So the Air Force is gonna give you an additional 12,000 on top of your Montgomery GI Bill to put towards your career, uh, your education if you go into a career field. Normally it's like our two T's, two alphas, our three E's. Um, it, it varies and it changes by time. So it all depends on the time you enlist the career field you go into, that'll determine if you're eligible for the kicker. And then as well, if you meet the requirements, you can potentially earn the post 9-11 GI Bill. So you have to complete uh, a certain amount of active duty days. That's not basic training in tech school. But if you meet that requirement, you'll be eligible for a post 9-11 GI Bill. At that rate, you'll get basic housing allowance or basic allowance for housing. You'll get your base, uh, base pay of an E-5 and you'll get money put towards your school. So so that would be off of like deployments or other, like if you go active for a little while or if you go full time for a little while and then or, deployment statuses and stuff like that all added up. Units have money to spend. And so if they have that money to bring people on orders for like six, seven, eight, nine months and somebody wants to do that, you're racking up your active duty time and that's going to help make you eligible for the post 9-11. So the educational benefits is all going to vary on the applicant just because are, do they want to go to school immediately? Do they really have their mind fixed on this one job and it, the educational benefits don't match up? Or, hey, are you willing to take a gap year to get that active duty, you know, be on some orders so you can make more bang for your buck to get the post 9-11 GI Bill? As long as you got a decent recruiter, they're going to get you taken care of and help you out to make sure you maximize the bang for your buck. Because like I said, at the end of the day, it's one week in a month and you're coming to us to help pay for school. So we have to make sure we're hooking you up in the best way possible. Because unlike active duty, you're not going to another state. You know exactly where our office is located. You know where our cars are. So we don't want you disgruntled, upset, and then coming back and then 
you know, becoming a headache. We want you to be happy. So every time you see us, you say, hey, you know, thanks. I got my bachelor's of so-and-so. So that way you can tell your friend, hey, so-and-so helped me get my school paid for. You might want to look into it. So we're going to try our best to get them taken care of. And like I said, if it doesn't work out, like out here in Oklahoma, they have a tuition waiver. So they'll pay for school. So if you do just want to go to, like, for example, University of Oklahoma from freshman to senior year, I might send you to the Air National Guard because they have a tuition state waiver. But every the, state the guard is have through one. the state itself. Correct. So you might offer state specific benefits to that that state unit. Correct. Nice. Cool. That's cool how you guys kind of like refer each other because even uh, when I had done the Air National Guard interview, he said like sometimes we'll refer people to active duty or or reserve. I don't think our our thing is the right fit for you. This is where you should be. It's not. You're not trying to just like car salesmen people into it, really trying to sell this car. I don't care if it's the best thing for you, but you guys are more focused on like, no, we want people to come in that are going to be happy. It's finally coming down in the forefront as far as what we call total force. And when you start seeing commercials, you're going to start seeing now active duty guard and reserve because that's the big push. We're really what's in the best interest for the applicant. Um, it's yeah. not mostly based for the jobs, but which component is going to be more beneficial for the applicant on what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Cause if they can have a good experience that reflects good on the air force, which then basically creates a continued perception that this is a great opportunity. If a lot of people are having good opportunities or good experiences, it just keeps pushing that. It, it promotes itself at that point. Correct. All right. Here's a, here's a big question. Probably not a lot of people, uh, do this but it's something that we've been asked before can you do air force rotc when you're in the reserves yes you can so if you are not a scholarship student you can be a reservist and you can still do the any rotc program um, at college if you do get selected to get commissioned then it's literally a simple uh, released from the reserve and active duty will take over. Um, or if you go the route, you don't get picked up to commission active duty, you can coordinate with your unit and do what's called the deserving airman program. You'll put a package together to commission within the reserve component because you've already met all the requirements. You took the Air Force officer qualification test. As long as everything's good to go and you have your bachelor's degree, you can go officer either route through active duty, or if they don't have enough slots available, you can go officer within a reserve. I'm glad you actually said that, because that, that was going through my head, I was gonna ask that, and you've just been like on top of it, like answering these questions <laughs> before before I can get, even get them out. So that, that was good, because I didn't even have that question written down, but I was curious how that would work when you had just mentioned going active duty, and I was like, hmm, I wonder what it would be like if you finished your, your four-year degree and were trying to become an officer in your own unit. So that's really cool that, that you mentioned that. Here's one of the biggest concerns people have about serving in the military and doing college. What if I deploy while I'm going to school? I won't say it's hard to answer that question, but we're in the military. If we get called, we're called. But realistically, from what I've seen, being a reservist my whole career, a lot of people volunteer for deployment and as well as a reserve component, we're small. You're not just a name on a piece of paper. Your commander knows who you are, your superintendent, your supervisor. They know what's going on, what you got going on in life. So if they do have a task in for a deployment and you're in school, they're probably going to have somebody, uh, too many volunteers anyway, and not put you on that rotation. If it's one of those all hands on deck, you coordinate with your Veterans Affairs office at your actual college, and they'll coordinate with the actual school to get you taken care of as well. So that way your school doesn't disenroll you or anything like that, because at once again, you're federally protected, you're getting activated into the uh, on Title X orders. So the school has to hold your standing as far as a student because you were a student when you got activated. It's not hard. It's just, it's one of those, it's going to be on a case-to-case -case basis because you never know what that activation might be. It could be a humanitarian relief and it has to be all hands on deck. Or it could just be that it's that year everybody has to go and we just need 15 bodies to head out, head out and hey, you're in school, don't worry about it. So we've talked about the college benefits of after you join, but what if somebody went to college before they join and they're just drowning in debt from going to college? Does the reserves offer a repayment program? 
for student loans that you've already taken out? We do, but honestly, it's the student loan repayment plan is basically they're going to give you 10,000 put yours tuition or towards that your debt. What we normally do is tell them, hey, we're going to try and place you into a job as a, uh, a signing bonus because it's going to be more than at 10,000. You take that money and as long as you're being smart and putting it towards your your debt instead of, you know, brand new, brand new system in your car, then we're helping you pay for that. We do offer it, but we normally try and push people towards the sign-in bonus just because it's a lot more money to put towards their uh, their college loans. Okay. And so with the that repayment program, is there like a stipulation to that? Like if you use that, you forfeit any other benefits or? You can't take the sign. So if you go into a career field as a sign-in bonus, you can't use the student loan repayment. So it's basically gotcha. the same thing. You got to pick or choose. You want the 15000 or you want this 10000 yeah. Normally, we tell everybody to take 15000 It's a lot more money. It's going to help out. Yeah, good. That's good to know. So with the GI Bill, can you get the GI Bill like active duty does? So we have the Montgomery and the post-9-11. How do those work for a reservist? So it's the same. As soon as you complete basic training in tech school, you'll have access to your Montgomery GI Bill select reserve. And that's only 40%. The longer you stay in the reserve component, the more that percentage is going to go up. If you do not use your Montgomery GI Bill Select Reserve, you can transfer that to a spouse or your children. So if you don't use it, you can just transfer that down the line. So like I said, a spouse or, or What's your kids. What's the requirements for transferring it to your children or your spouse? So my office partner, he actually transferred his educational benefits to his wife. Okay. So he can actually answer that question for you so once i reached the six-year mark uh and i had at, at that point i had the um i had the gi bill for myself because i came in active duty so it's a little bit different than sergeant walker coming yeah. in with a traditional reservist role um but once i reached that uh it was really as simple as you know you just get into the system you'd be in the system as far as you know you being able to gain access to all the education benefits and everything and obviously you would have your family members and everything listed. And it's really at that point, just as simple as, you know, doling out, how, you know, how you want to split it up and you just disperse it, you know, however many months that you want to go. Uh, in my in my case, I was giving it at that point, a lot of it to my wife so she could go to school. Um, but then, you know, I also have children. So what she didn't use, I kind of put back some to me and then kind of placed it out, you know, uh, evenly distributed it to my kids, you know, when they become of age to be able to go to college. But to your directly to your question, uh, it was that six year mark. Now, Sir Walker would be able to answer better as far as is he traditional reservist? No, no, he's out. He's prior service active duty. OK. OK. So you're looking at as he comes. No, no, no. It's just, really for you too. It's more oh, for, for other too. people, <laughs> other people that are going. So like for reservists, how would that work? It's the same, six years. So it's the same. So okay. it says it says active duty or reserve on this that we're pulling up. Um, yeah, it looks like it's just at the six year mark. So really it, it is just about that total time frame. It's not about being active duty and having it be a career. It's just about how much how much of a percentage of your GI bill that you have. And then once you have that, that six year mark, you can transfer whatever you got. Should be hundred percent at the six year mark. Okay. So yeah. it should be hundred percent at that year mark anyway. Cool. So it should be good. That's, that's something that you can tell, tell other people too. Now when they're joining, we all just learned something new. Yeah. <laughs> my, my I, always tell, I always tell people too, the air force has so many benefits and opportunities that like you can't know about all of them. There's just too many opportunities for veterans and military members and like it's crazy how many opportunities they offer it's it's almost overwhelming when you're in like trying to decide between all these opportunities you want to take advantage of like it's just you're bombarded with so much oh yeah